Hey guys, this week's podcast features Chef Calvin College, the executive chef of Savor Restaurant. Calvin came down, talked about his start in the culinary world, working at the new Niagara Falls Culinary Institute, and improving the Niagara Falls restaurant scene. Let's get to it. I first met you at the uh, the Taste of Culinary back in April, was it? Yeah, it was April at the Hotel Lafayette this year. Yeah, um, yeah, that was kind of a, a pretty crazy event. Like I had yeah. heard about the event because I, kn- I know James Roberts and, and he <laughs> yeah. participated. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be that busy and full of people and uh, yeah that space was kind of uh it was it was smaller than we um we expected with all the people inside yeah yeah but it was nice to be you know jam-packed and yeah moving, yeah i mean so. i guess that's a good problem to have rather than yeah. <laughs> not have that many people there yeah it's always a scramble to get that event together because we're trying to get everyone involved in the schools and trying to get more restaurants involved and, yeah um, it's always last minute, and then it comes all together right at the end. So. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I mean, it worked out really well. I was, uh, I was really impressed, like with, uh, like the diverse like uh, food options that were there, and uh, I was surprised that there was actually like a couple of restaurants there. I kind of thought it was going to be more like private clubs and, and schools and things like that, but it had a nice mix. It seems. Yeah, we're trying to get more restaurants out and involved. Um, yeah. Uh, some just don't seem like they want to do it, or yeah, they they do do it, like the newer restaurants coming out. So. Mm-hmm. We're just trying to uh, to get more people involved. So. Yeah, and were you you were one of the main people who put it together this year. Yeah, I was the one that had to really give a shit about it. <laughs> <laughs> and at the last minute, you know, yeah, everyone's yeah. like, "Oh, I was involved in that too." It was such a success. So. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was fun. I had a really good time, and I was I was glad oh, you good. invited us there. It was it was really cool. Yeah, James James Roberts. Um, said we should invite you know more people <laughs> with the media and stuff like that yeah, yeah. so and krista was there and mm-hmm. you were there so it was nice to have you guys and yeah yeah look forward to having you in the future for sure oh yeah i'm sold now like it was okay. a really fun event and, actually uh, we're gonna have it at the culinary institute next year that's oh what really we're on, so. nice yeah nice that's a, a bigger venue yeah maybe some more wiggle room for yeah, people <laughs> absolutely um what what got you uh involved with the the culinary federation because that that's kind of like a that's like a uh a, a, a very I want to say dedicated path for like a, a person in the restaurant industry or, or culinary industry to go down. Like what, what was, uh, um, well, I went to ECC for culinary school and then I, uh, I met a couple of people that were involved with the Federation and suggested that we get, um, I get involved and students get involved. Yeah. So yeah. I did. I, I got a membership and then I started meeting a lot of people and, um, just progressed from there. So yeah, it was it, good. It's a, it's it's interesting. Like I was going over it, and we had James, who's a mm. he's a I don't know which level he is. I I want to say C E C. Yes, yeah. the executive chef, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and you're the uh, certified chef de cuisine. I am at this point. I'm going for my certified uh, executive chef. So nice. It's just uh, me doing it at this. Yeah, point. <laughs> I was gonna ask, like, cause uh, so I just watched. Um, there's a documentary called Sam. And it's about the master Somalia exam, and, oh, yeah. and it follows these That's guys. Pretty intense. Yeah, yeah, it follows these guys who are studying for it. And I was thinking, like, when you were coming over here, I was like, "Is that kind of like how does those exams and certifications work? Like, is it like a lot of studying? Is it actual? Yeah, it's a lot of studying. It's a lot of stuff that you know already. Yeah, or you do every day. Yeah. Um, there's a, a written exam you have to take, and then mm-hmm. there's an actual practical exam you have to take. Okay. So, and each level is different in what you have to do, and uh, yeah. You know how hard it is. Is it like a pretty big jump up to the to the executive chef certification? Or um, it, it is. It's a big bigger deal. It looks yeah. great on your resume. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, I forget what I was going to say. But <laughs> well, it seems like uh, like is there like somewhat of like the aspect where it's kind of like a little bit of pressure? Like you have to perform in front of like judges, like with the like actual cooking demonstration, or, or? I, I don't know how the exam goes. I, I'm kind of yeah. It's kind of like. Um, uh, you you go in and then you have certain times that you have to start mm-hmm. and then you have certain times you have to be done by so you have like oh, okay. two and a half three hours to complete uh, okay. whatever's on your list okay and um, it's like you're making like a, a a couple courses or how does that work yeah the certified executive chef I believe it's courses okay um and then uh, the one I took was you have to make like a uh, stock or bring your stock in then you have to make a sauce from that or oh, okay. break down a fish break down a chicken just all the basics yeah yeah um in front of judges too which they're just staring at you the whole time that's kind of be weird <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's a frightening experience until they call you in the room and say you pass <laughs> so. yeah like that was like uh 
the whole crazy thing, I watched that documentary, and these guys go through these three stages of the exam, and then it all just comes down to they go into a room, and a guy tells them if they passed or not. Like, it just yep. it seems ridiculous. I don't know. Um, there's a certified Master Chef exam. Yeah, I saw that, and I, that just seems crazy. insane. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you have to know everything, basically. They do yeah. from pastry to uh, uh, culinary arts to, you know, everything. Yeah. And then... Um, that's a week long, I believe. Oh, okay. And oh, so geez. every day you go in and you don't know if you're going to pass that day. So yeah. if you fail the first day, you're done. <laughs> if you keep passing, then you're, you know, you're back Tuesday and then Wednesday and then, you yeah. Know, and wow. it's just like, yeah, that's really, really intense. That's got to be like a pretty low success rate for that kind of exam. Like only yeah, there's a certain only, amount of them in the world or something like that. Yeah. There's, I think 60 something, <laughs> I believe. Yeah. That's crazy. There's a lot of failure on that. Yeah. Is that yeah. A, any type of goal of yours to, to get to the, the, the master? Or? I don't know if I'd ever <laughs> attempt that one. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I don't know. You never know. It so. seems like, uh, like those certifications seem like they're pretty popular in the, the education world and the uh, like club world is is there a reason for that? I mean, because I don't think you see many like independent restauranteurs, or maybe I don't know that have like those certifications. Like, yeah, uh, most of the members are. Uh, there's a lot of pop. The big population would be um, uh, teachers mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, yeah. there are some out there in country clubs. Yeah, yeah. Member wise, um, as far as restaurants, there's there's not that many. No, yeah, um, I don't know why. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I we've had a couple of chefs down here, and um, like we've had the discussion of if if it's better to or not if it's better, but like the preferred method of going to school to learn your trade or to just do it on your own. Like you know, like kind of get the training, I guess. And I think there's maybe that some independent chefs think it's cooler to <laughs> or it's more street cred to just learn yourself on the way up i sure. mean I, I guess it's kind of a different atmosphere i would say yeah it depends on what you want to i mean i met so many people and i probably wouldn't have the job i have or what i have yeah now yeah without the uh, american culinary federation but yeah it's definitely a great networking it thing. just depends yeah and the networking is unbelievable but yeah. it just depends on what you want to do yeah I mean, there's nothing against it and there's mm-hmm. i mean there's more for it, I believe. So. Yeah. So when you were going to culinary school, like, what were you, what was your goal in mind? Or how, how let's say, how did you even go to culinary, or why did you go to culinary school? I worked in the industry for, I was uh, small independent restaurants in Buffalo for, since I was 15. And okay. then I just decided to go to culinary school because I wanted to learn more. Yeah. Um, was so that I just a, a thing like you were just like a teenager and you just wanted a job and then you kind of fell into exactly. enjoying what you did? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I was making tacos at 15 and then nice. you know, from there to washing dishes to mm-hmm. everything it took to do it. Um, and mm-hmm. I always enjoyed it and I was, you know, I was always told I was good at it. So yeah. I just kept working, um, mm-hmm. graduated high school and then I just kind of fell off and started partying a lot. And, <laughs> <laughs> as, mo- as most 18 year olds do. <laughs> yeah. And I went back to school uh, about eight years later. Oh, okay. So I was late in, yeah. the, in the culinary school. But Yeah. Well, that seems like that's kind of growing. It seems like more people are, are not opposed to going back to culinary school, finding their... Ni- I mean, we had Bruce Wysela, mm-hmm. and he didn't start cooking until he was like 30 or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. I mean, oh, wow. he was like in the IT world, and he like decided like he didn't want to do it and just decided to be chef like mm-hmm. so it, it definitely seemed like that's more of a popular choice now for people to find that yeah exactly um and it, it worked out for me so, yeah I mean, i'd say it, so <laughs> yeah, everything's great right now that's awesome um another part of the the whole uh culinary federation it seems like there's also an emphasis on competitions it seems like or, or maybe there are competitions yeah i've never gotten involved with them but no no um, th- there are certain competitions you can take and yeah um, it, it like it it just seems kind of crazy. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know. Like, is that something you've ever considered or is that just not your, in your wheelhouse? Right uh, no, not, <laughs> I'm so busy with work. It's yeah, like, yeah. You know, working 12, 14 hour days, six days a week. And then, you know, our early day off is say Monday and then yeah, yeah. we got to catch up on everything else that we haven't done for the week. So Jeez. doing competitions at this point, probably not, but, yeah. um, I was, uh, I watched the culinary team at the, at the culinary Institute and they, Oh yeah. I was watching them, and you know, I, I we did some tastings and stuff like that. So it's cool, and it's good to mentor the yeah, students, yeah. and you know, give them advice. And mm-hmm. I have a few of them that work for me at this point. So oh, nice! It's nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We had um, uh, Corey down here for a podcast earlier this okay. year. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he he like just like his. It seemed like he was all about just competitions. Like it was mm-hmm. almost like 
cooking was like a sport basically for him and he like threatened and i was just like that's a whole weird like i never would have thought that like the culinary world could be i guess a sport yeah there's there's so many uh different aspects to it i mean you can do that you can do what i'm doing you can Mm -hmm. teach i mean that's what's great about it and Mm -hmm. there's so many options yeah so you got out of culinary school and i saw that you worked at the i wrote it down brookfield country club yeah i was there yep I actually got a job there through one of my teachers. Oh, really? Um, yep. And then he um, he mentored me through it. And then uh, I worked uh, all the stations there, mm-hmm. the hotline. I did banquets. I did round station or rounds yeah. uh, position. Then uh, I was offered the sous chef job, so I took that. And nice. uh, and then this job came along at at the Culinary Institute, and yeah. I couldn't pass it up. No, so. it's a it's a pretty sweet sweet yeah, job. Definitely. So when you when you're working in the country club, though. Um, did you enjoy that atmosphere of, of, a, of a kitchen as opposed to like maybe an independent restaurant? Was there something that drew you into that kind of thing? Or I did. I liked it. Um, but then it's basically uh, the same stuff every year. You know, you yeah. have this party and you're going to have it next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to be the same people. And yeah. It's a lot of mass producing things. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of repetition. I mean, it was okay because I kind of ran the restaurant. Yeah. As the chef ran the banquet section of it. Oh, okay, nice. So, so you got nice. a little bit more of a taste of that kind of, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, the, only, the other thing is the same people coming in all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, you can do different things that you want to do. But yeah. But there's a certain point where you're still making meatloaf. and <laughs> <laughs> Chicken fingers and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think we've talked to James and, and like for all the fancy stuff he'll do every now and then, he's like still at the end of the day, I'm making a whole bunch of club sandwiches. And yep, exactly. <laughs> So, uh, so you after that you left and uh, you went to uh, Savor, right? Yep. Or, that's, I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yep. <laughs> At the uh, the Culinary Institute, um, I guess for anyone who doesn't know, um, why don't you explain what the, the actual restaurant is? Because it's kind of different. It, it's it's an actual restaurant. I mean, any, anybody can go and eat there, right? Yep, anyone can go come and eat. Um, we're open for lunch and dinner. Yeah. Um, the restaurant itself. The executive chef of the restaurant. I have um, a paid staff. I have a sous chef, okay, and then a paid staff that works there also. So, oh, nice. The students will internship uh, through the restaurant. They do their production one class in the deli, okay, that's next to the restaurant. Yeah, and then they do their production two class in the restaurant. So they get a real life experience all in the same building. Okay, because I was curious. I was wondering if your like staff was going to be students because I felt like that would be. That's kinda... what I thought at first. And I was like, <laughs> this is going to be crazy. But... <laughs> Because then you no. like at one point you're like I can't fire them because they kind of have to. I was like in my head I was like that's got to be really wrong. <laughs> but no, so you have like an actual staff that I have an actual staff. Okay, yeah. okay. So, and yeah. then uh, the students will rotate on the stations and learn mm-hmm. each station, and uh, then they work with me and learn what I do. So it, they get a real life experience, and it's nice for them. So. Nice. That whole place is gorgeous. Like uh, just from yeah, the pictures I've seen online. Um, and I like just walking by the outside and going to that Barnes and Noble, like that whole project. It's one of those things where like, I was just proud that it existed. In, mm-hmm. in, in, especially in downtown Niagara Falls. Yeah. Especially in downtown Niagara Falls. Yeah. yeah which is kind of coming back. You know, it, it's on the up again. Yeah. Yeah. Like for sure. Buffalo is. Yeah. Buffalo is, it's a little hard, farther ahead, but <laughs> Niagara Falls is coming back. It's coming back. Bit, so slowly, but surely, slowly, but surely. Um, it does. It looks like a big city culinary school, like yeah. in New York city from the outside. It's, mm-hmm. it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I was fortunate enough to see the project from the beginning yeah. when it was nothing till you know, and going through the process yeah. and actually seeing the final product and getting to work there. So, yeah. How is, um, how has the reaction been in like the area to, to the restaurant? Like, ha- have you seen more people get excited for, for it to oh, be yeah. there? Have you seen like people coming out like as a destination, like coming from the burbs and all that? Yeah, we have, we have regulars and yeah. then we have, um, you know, there's people that come out there like, I can't believe we're eating you know, nice food in downtown Niagara Falls. <laughs> I don't mean to trash anyone else, but there's not I, much around. I don't. There. I don't think you're you're going that much out on a limb when you when you're. No. It's better than like Hard Rock Cafe and yeah, <laughs> and whatnot. But um, but you know, it, it's it's nice, and we're just growing from here. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of tourists now. Mm-hmm. It's tourist season down there, so there's tons of tourists. But you know, nice. They don't mind to spend the money and <laughs> don't mind to help them out. So it's yeah. it's good. Um, was was one of the appeals of the job uh, working with students or, or kind of having some type of mentor like role? Or? Uh, I just wanted to be an executive chef, <laughs> and that was my next step. In yeah, life. yeah, that makes sense. So, a brand new restaurant, brand new equipment, yeah. the student thing. I mean, I always thought I'd teach a little bit, anyways. Yeah. 
so that it all kind of worked out. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I guess it maybe isn't that much. I, I, I had like this vision that there's just like 20 kids in the kitchen and you're just like telling them all what to do. But no, it, it seems like it's maybe more of a, a, a structured yeah. environment. We're, we're trying to get it to that point. Uh, the first semester was crazy. We just opened and I have like 10 students. I'm like, okay, what do I do with them? You know, unpack boxes and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So it was kind of crazy the first semester, but next semester comes along yeah. and, uh, it's going to be a little more structured than it was yeah. at the beginning. The beginning was nuts. But, yeah. So, how, how have you how have you found that the the kids who are who are in the school or or their their attitude? Because it kind of seems like to work in a kitchen is becoming kind of a cool thing. And so I'm kind of until they have to work seventy hours a week. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> like I think a lot of people watch like Chopped or, or all those things, and and they see these the Food Network and Cooking Channel, and they think it's like really cool. But I I was curious how many kids are going to school who think like. Oh, this is gonna be cool. I'm gonna get a couple of tattoos and be a, yeah. a badass. Like I don't know. Like have you have you noticed that the mentality is right with the kids? I guess, or, yeah, or that you, they're in it for the right reasons. You have those students, then you have students that are just there, and then you have <laughs> students that. I mean, you know right away from the first ten minutes when they walk in the door if they're gonna last or if they're gonna get a job after this. Or, <laughs> you just know. I mean, yeah. I mean, the dedication and then the uh, the respect is huge, you know, for myself and everyone yeah. else there. Like if they start calling you Calvin instead of Chef. Yes, they shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't be doing that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so you know right away, and you know which ones. I mean, I've hired a few of them already. So, yeah, well, I mean, that's good. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That that's good. I it's it's just uh I think there's a perception that it's just a, such a glorified job and it's really not. No. I mean you're working from nine o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock at night. Yeah. You know, yeah. six days a week and that's fine. I don't mind it. I love it. That's yeah, yeah. what I do. But these students don't understand that. And they think they're gonna be an executive chef when they get out of uh, out of the culinary school. Yeah. You know? And yeah. it's it's crazy. Like you're not. You're gonna be in the in the pantry making eight dollars an hour, making salads and yeah, learning yeah. your way up, you know? Yeah, so. like uh Ed uh, from my case, Ed Forrester, yep. he told me that he was interviewing people for the restaurant, and like the one kid, he asked him like, "What is his plans?" And he's like, "Well, you know, in like six years, I'd like to open my own restaurant." And I was like, "Really?" <laughs> he's like, "I'm 30, and I don't think I'm even close to opening my own restaurant." Like, it's just I think there's the, the, this this new I don't know new generation, but whatever that are coming into it yep. that because I mean for a while it seemed like the the restaurant industry was more of a outcast thing rather than the cool kids and mm-hmm. so all the rejects worked in the restaurants <laughs> yeah <laughs> well that was kind of the perception anyone who's read like uh, kitchen confidential or any of those yeah, things it's a great like, book. yeah um, but exactly it takes a special person to do a, a chef job or yeah, work yeah. in a restaurant yeah um like, and you know if you have it or not I mean, yeah. if you can do it physically or mentally <laughs> and then yeah. you know it's a little bit of a psychotic kind of thing, I think. <laughs> um, so, how was the uh, the adjustment though to becoming like an executive chef? Like, how how long has uh, Saver been open for roughly? Uh, we opened in October last year. Okay, so, so you're coming up on a, a year in a yeah. little bit, yeah. And when I was at the country club, I learned you know ordering and uh, management and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So yeah. being there for that long, I learned a lot of things. Um, yeah. I was just ready. I was ready a year before I even got the job. I was just waiting for something to happen. Yeah, um, yeah. Except executive chef jobs in this area just don't come along that often. Yeah, that's so right. yeah, I can attest to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just from just from looking at you know the restaurants that open up and everything. Yeah, it seems like it's a pretty. Exactly. There's uh, a lot more restaurants opening up now, and it's, it's chefs opening their own places. I see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, or chefs opening up like their second <laughs> restaurant, or second or third yeah. or fourth. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um. How was like creating that first menu though? Like, what was your your goal? F- like, did you have any? Did you basically have free will that you could make whatever menu you wanted, or did the restaurant or culinary institute kind of want some things, or how did that all work out? Um, it was my menu. It's what, what I wanted to do, which was nice. Um, nice. Even to this day, I have free will of what I want to do. We're That's playing awesome. around with like molecular stuff and oh really and different stuff in the menu, like spears and. Uh, um, like caviars and stuff like that. So we're just doing a lot of different things. That's really cool. Um, I got a lot of free will, which is a huge thing for myself. Because yeah, I mean, if I'm bolted down, like at the country club, it, yeah, it's yeah. just like you're not you not learning anything. You're not teaching anything. It's mm-hmm. just the basics. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. But if you can do what you want to do, that you can't beat that. No. So yeah, I, right now I have I have free will of what I want to do. Um, we do tastings with my boss, who oversees the whole culinary institute. And yeah. He's been great and giving me whatever I want to do and new equipment yeah. and 
That's awesome. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's a, I mean, that's pretty much every chef's dream is to, <laughs> to yeah. have free will to do it to do what you want exactly i mean as long as it's nice yeah right huh? yeah and you go from there um, yeah the first menu was just focused on fall mm-hmm. it was seasonal menus we just changed for summer so nice yeah it, it was just fall ingredients and that's all i i, what I based it on so nice yep. how often are, are you in your head thinking of of new things to every day right now <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you go out for lunch or dinner we're always i'm always checking out stuff so yeah. just to see what's going on do you do like a little r&d in the kitchen that like before service and things like that or how how does how does a, a dish formulate in from thought to to on a plate for you uh, for me it would be just uh, one ingredient like uh uh what was the one we just did we did a compressed melon salad so the, it started with watermelon the idea of watermelon okay what can we do with that mm-hmm. make it nice yeah so we just took three different kinds of melons and then mm-hmm. um we cryo backed them and compressed them so nice. you get a nice bright color Nice. And then uh, I said, okay, what goes with watermelon? You know, feta cheese. We have feta cheese chips. Mm-hmm. Um, then we went with uh, balsamic pearls, so or caviar. So mm-hmm. we did a white and a black. Nice. Uh, some mint and some almonds, some microgreens to dress it up a little bit. You just start with one ingredient and then go from there. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. That actually sounds really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how have you, like, uh, do you feel like you have a pretty much a... a, a do you feel like the the people who are coming to the restaurant kind of have trust in you and and uh you can put maybe weirder stuff on the menu and and feel confident that people aren't going to be like oh what's that? Or- yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to do my own thing, you yeah. know. And people are getting it. Yeah. They're understanding it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like you don't have to put like you know a buffalo chicken fingers sandwich or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> like no, We're no. You, but you feel like confident that you can you can put whatever you want on the menu and and, yes. and your audience is. And I think so, and yeah. I think people are a lot more um, willing to try different things nowadays because of Food Network and uh, magazines and what's on TV or whatever oh, yeah. it is. But like the whole foodie culture, yeah. Yeah, so there, people are more willing to try stuff. That's good. So it, it's good. And we're doing something that, you know, it's not been done in Niagara Falls at this point. No. Which no, is no, fun. No. And uh, even Buffalo, I mean, there's a lot of nice restaurants in Buffalo. Yeah. Um, people are exploring a lot more. Mm-hmm. Mike A's is one of them. It's oh, God, doing yeah. a great job over there. Yeah, um, yeah. They're doing some cool stuff. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, for Niagara Falls, we're the first ones. So it's great, <laughs> you know. Yeah. We're just trying to do something different and trying to make it fun for everyone. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. that that's what, you know ideally people want that's what it's all about <laughs> yeah and at the end of the day you're satisfied you're satisfied with you know what you've done yeah yeah and then makes you come back for another <laughs> 14 hour shift <laughs> yeah how um <clears throat> i guess uh i mean how do you have, have you yourself uh before you took the job though did you have any reservations about niagara falls or, or the area or any of that kind of thing <laughs> Uh, maybe a little bit, <laughs> um, but then I seen what they were doing with that building. Yeah, and I said, you know what, this is I cannot pass this up. This yeah. is gonna be fantastic, and I'm gonna make the best of it. Yeah. Do you kind of so. have Do you kind of have like tools there that like maybe toys that you might not have had at, at other places just because of the the school atmosphere and uh, oh everything? yeah, we have like an Electrolux combi oven which is fantastic. It's like <laughs> you can program stuff on it. Nice. Uh, next to that's a blast chiller, blast freezer, so it nice. cools down sauces, stocks, nice. freezes like in within minutes. Nice. Um, we're getting immersion circulator. I actually I do all the sous vide in the combi oven now. Okay. Um, and then uh, yeah, we have cryovac machine. We have all the equipment's brand new. Nice. So That's got to be brand awesome. new island. We got a woodstone pizza oven, which is great. Really? Nice. We're not. We're doing uh, crab cakes out of there. We're doing steaks. Nice. Chicken dishes, not just pizza. Um, <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So, it's awesome. Yeah. So, were you there when they they were like literally building the kitchen out? Or yeah, we were there. I got hired in July. Okay. And uh, they were just finishing up, so it took them a couple more months, and uh, we opened in October. So, before that, I seen the building in uh, April. So yeah. it was just a shell. Yeah. And then, okay, this is going to be here, here, and here. And then you're like, okay, let's yeah. see what happens. And How was that experience, just like being there on the ground floor? and like, like That was great. It yeah. was great. You know, just, just to see something, you know, there was nothing in that building for so long. Yeah. And now it's, you know, I think they spent $28 million on it, and it's beautiful. Yeah. So Yeah. I, re- I really hope, like, I mean, because, like, what, what's going on there is just fantastic. And, and all the different programs that they have. I know there's even, like, a mixology 
thing that yeah, goes on there. There's a mixology class. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's an ice carving class. Yeah, it's it's cool. crazy. Yeah. Like, I mean, basically, it's like it's uh it's essentially like, uh, you know, what people would pay forty thousand dollars to go to like CIA or something like that. Like a lot of those similar classes are being offered there. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the options are limitless right at this point, and we're yeah. gonna keep building. Yeah. You know? It's not that uh, everything we have now is going to be everything we're going to have in five years. You know, yeah, we're yeah. just going to keep making it nicer and better and more accommodating for students and mm-hmm. staff. So, Do you ever see yourself doing any type of lecture work there or any of that kind of stuff? Or? Uh, well, next semester I'll be overseeing the production one class. Oh, okay. So, oh, so, so kind of. The kids' first year, like, they know nothing. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to show them how to hard-boiled eggs and <laughs> grilled chicken and... All that because they don't know, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Th- them coming in that building, they're they're scared or they're nervous or you yeah. know or they know everything. <laughs> so yeah, um, well, uh, it, it'll be good to yeah. oversee that and get to know them at their first year. Yeah, because they'll be there for a few years. So I kind of it, it makes me think like uh, when I first went to college, I went for like computer science, and I took a, the introductory class, and the teacher basically made it seem like, listen, I'm going to make this ridiculously hard so that either you are going to know that you really want to do this or that you're just going to quit. Mm-hmm. Like, do you kind of feel like there's a little bit of that, that you kind of want to be like, you want to make sure like these kids know like, okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Cause on the, at the end of the day, they're leaving and you've taught them or you're one of their teachers. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, and then they go get a job at wherever it may be. C yeah. bar will say, and then yeah, yeah. be like, this kid's a dumbass. Like <laughs> you didn't learn anything at that school. Yeah. You know, so you it's kind of have, a reflection of you. Yeah, exactly. You want to, you want to have, um, a good reflection, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what are your plans for, I mean, you're, you're just coming up on your first full year. Um, I mean, are there things that you're already like looking forward to in the future for, for saver, like plans that you want to do or, or goals with, either the menu or service or any of that kind of stuff or yeah we're all i mean we're always trying to make it better yeah so the plans would be yes to make service better make the restaurant better make the mm-hmm. menu better yeah we're always i mean each menu is better than the next so we're always building on that nice um, any plans i mean we're just we're trying to we're still finding our feet so you know yeah. Um, we're seeing when we're going to be busy and when we're not going to be busy. It's so unpredictable at this point. Oh, really? Is it yeah. still just one night? It could just be packed and the other. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. the next night we're doing, you know, 40 dinners. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the night before we did 160. So it's yeah. like, we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Have you not gotten, how has it been like with summertime? Like, is, is Summer's that. Summer's been good. We just put a patio out front. Oh, nice. Which is really nice. Yeah, that'll, um, help. that'll help for sure. We got fire pits out there and oh, uh, lounge cool. chairs. And nice. so, yeah, we're hoping that takes off. Um, uh, summer's been a lot more tourists, like I said. Oh yeah. So I guess that makes sense. Tourists yeah. and families. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. That, that's that's good though. I mean, and that's good that people are like going out of their way to look it up and and find out about it. And yeah. Everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Um. I mean, is there anything else? Uh. Uh. Any like. Uh, I mean, so basically, for anyone who's interested, it's it's right in the institute. Uh. Mm-hmm. You guys do lunch and dinner, correct? Lunch and dinner were closed on Mondays. Okay. Uh, we're open from eleven thirty to two. For lunch and then five to ten for dinner. Nice. So, and have you guys? Uh, I don't. I apologize if you do. Do you guys do like tasting menus, or have you thought about doing a tasting menu for like dinner service? Or yeah, we we have a chef's table. Oh, you do. It seats ten. Sits right in the restaurant. Really, yeah, it's beautiful. Um, uh, we do tastings there. Okay. So we've done a few. We've done probably like ten tastings at this point. Nice. Um, in the restaurant and at the table. So, okay. And then in between each course, I'll come out and explain what they're going to be having next. Do you guys? So. Do you kind of get a little weird with the the, the tasting? I love that. <laughs> tastings. I do tastings all day long if I could. <laughs> like, is it when you know one of those are coming? Do you kind of like look well, in I'm the ready. look in the fridge and be like, what kind of weird things can I pull out? And yeah, absolutely. Throw at these you want to always surprise them and then make them satisfied. Yeah. Um, I I take stuff off the menu too. Yeah. So, you know, if someone's come before, I've had people already do like two to three tastings. Yeah. Um, we'll uh, we'll research and see, you know, we want to give them the same thing they had last time. Nice. That's pretty so, cool. That's yeah. Good. That's good service. Yeah. Uh, so you can, those are pretty much like you got to reserve it, obviously, right? Yeah. Or, or you, ahead of time. Maybe two days in advance. All right. Um, nice. Yeah. But the chef's table is great. Yeah. It sits right in the kitchen. You get to see all the action. Yeah. There's yeah. not a lot of, I, I think that. I actually don't know of any chef tables otherwise in Western New York. I'm not. I don't think so. No. No. That's actually really cool. Could be the I first have no one. idea. Yeah. I mean, I know. Um, 
Yeah, I can't think of one. I know that Martin Cook's place over on the west side, it's kind of like 12 seats, one dinner only a night, but that's it's just a restaurant that's kind of just their thing. But, okay. but the actual chef's table, like that's something that's picked up you know, big in New York City and Chicago. Like That's something yeah. that could definitely take off here. Yeah, we took advantage of it. I mean, we had the resources, and we yeah. said, you know, we're going to make this the best we can. Yeah, especially if you have, like, a beautiful kitchen, too, a beautiful, mm-hmm. brand-new-looking kitchen that yeah. you want to show off. you got to keep it clean. It's an open kitchen, so... <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you can see everything. <laughs> like, you drop a knife or, you know, anything. The dishwasher drops glasses. It's happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Do you kind of have to... Uh, I don't know your personality in the kitchen, but you kind of have to censor yourself with the open kitchen and everything? Yes. <laughs> 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 yep <laughs> can't swear yeah yeah can't do anything um i'm i'm pretty calm i'm you're, a calm you're not a screamer i'm not a screamer at all <laughs> i fit really well into that kitchen nice um but when i'm pissed i'm pissed and they know it yeah so. but you just also have to be aware that people can see you <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> nobody ever thinks about that with the open kitchen everyone like loves the idea of an open kitchen but i'm always like well, closed kitchen, you're doing whatever the hell you want. Exactly. Saying whatever you want. You're blaring, you know, Metallica or yeah, Madonna exactly. or whatever you want, and you can that's do. That's not happening here. <laughs> no. no, that's that's kind of funny. But... Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and anything, you know, you gotta wear gloves all the time, which you do anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You're always wearing gloves, and you're always making sure nothing's falling, and mm-hmm. it's it just it's it's different experience, but yeah. it's cool. It's good. I, I gotta imagine that was kind of probably you picked up some of those things from the col- uh, country club world too. Yep. Yeah, that everything's got to be, you know, nice and tidy. And, nice and organized. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I guess that probably helped. <clears throat> yep. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that we kind of kind of covered everything there. Cool. Um, I mean, is there anything, any events or anything coming up that we should know about? Or well, We're doing happy hours on uh, Tuesdays okay. from 5 to 7. Nice. Um, we're trying to do like a, uh, not an industry night, but like a professional's night on Wednesdays. Oh, that would be really cool. Um, yeah, just to get like professional people in the area to come by and, yeah. you know, have a just sit down, have a couple beers, and we're gonna outside the fire pit and the, oh, that would be really cool. New tables and stuff, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> other than that, no, we're doing tastings. The summer menu's out, just started, and nice. uh, we're ready to go. So nice. Yep. Well, congrats on all the success. It, it everything I've read, it, the place looks gorgeous. Food is really good. So keep up Great. the good work. And uh, yeah, we got to get you in there. I know. I have to get there. I feel like a dick that <laughs> we did this whole conversation. I haven't tried no, your no. food yet, but except for at the the taste. Yeah. Of culinary, which is very good there. But, oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. But no, I, I promise I will be heading up there. Right, just let me know, can. and we'll take care of you. We'll do a tasting, <laughs> and we'll do whatever you want. <laughs> I can't turn that down. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thanks so much, Kevin, for coming Thank down you. here.